Good morning and welcome to our um, live streamed Eucharist today from the rectory chapel. Um, it's uh, it's we, we, Ludovic's um, class bubble at school has somebody who has an infection within it so Ludovic's not allowed to leave the house and so we needed to move this broadcast service into the rectory today. It's wonderful that you can join us. Thank you so much for being with us. At the start of our Eucharist, we light our fourth Advent candle. Leopold, do you want to come? Okay. I'm going to hold right at the end. We're going to light this one. As light in our darkness, as hope in our hearts, come, Lord Jesus. Virgin of virgin Salem quakes, what news is this that Gabriel breaks? Behold the sacred mystery, for God himself takes flesh in thee. Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel shall come to thee, O Israel. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. As we gather to worship Almighty God, we sing our first hymn, All My Hope on God is Founded. Brothers and sisters, let us prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries of Christ's love by calling to mind our sins. <clears throat> Lord Jesus, you came to gather the nations into the peace of your kingdom. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You come in word and sacrament 
to strengthen us in holiness. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You, you will come in glory with salvation for your people. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. God, our Redeemer, who prepared the Blessed Virgin Mary to be the mother of your Son, grant that, as she looked for his coming as our Saviour, so we may be ready to greet him when he comes again to be our judge, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We hear our first scripture reading, which is read by Helen. Our reading this morning from the New Testament is Romans chapter 16. Now to God who is able to strengthen you according to my gospel and the proclamation of Jesus Christ according to the revelation of the mystery that was kept secret for long ages, but is now disclosed and through the prophetic writings is made known to all the Gentiles according to the command of the eternal God to bring about the obedience of faith to the only wise God, through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory for ever. Amen. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. <clears throat> Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Behold the handmaid of the Lord, be it unto me according to thy word. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, According to St. Luke, glory, glory to you, O Lord. Lord. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth, to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph, of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary, and he came to her and said, Greetings, favoured one, the Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favour with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I am a virgin? The angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore the child to be born will be holy. He will be called Son of God. And now your relative Elizabeth in her old age has also conceived a son, and this is the sixth month for her who was said to be barren, for nothing will be impossible with God. Then Mary said, Here am I, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. 
This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Our sermon this morning is preached by Douglas. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. What we call the beginning is often the end, and to make an end is to make a beginning. The end is where we start from. These enigmatic lines from the fourth of T.S. Eliot's four quartets seem extraordinarily significant as we celebrate Advent. The end and the beginning, or the beginning and the end. Alpha and Omega apparently reversed. In Advent, we prepare not only for the coming of the Christ child at Christmas, but for the end time when Christ will come again in his glorious majesty to judge both the quick and the dead, in the words of the beautiful prayer book collect for the first Sunday of Advent. The concept of the second coming of Christ is found very clearly in Matthew's Gospel. Then the sign of the Son of Man will appear in heaven. Then all the tribes of the earth shall mourn, and they will see the Son of Man coming on the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. St. Paul continues the theme. For you yourselves know very well that the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night. Then comes the end, when he hands over the kingdom to God the Father, after he has destroyed every ruler and every power. I think we have to conceive of the messianic Christ as embracing the whole of creation in his arms as he hung on the cross. As we prepare for joy and lead the romance of Christmas, we recall that it is through the incarnation of God in Christ that creation has been redeemed, has been brought back to righteousness before God, from whom it came at creation. What we call the end is often the beginning. And to make an end is to make a beginning. The end is where we start from. Christ on the cross becomes not a local figure of first century Judaism, a baby in a crib, or indeed a man on a cross 33 years later, but a cosmic figure transcending time and space. His end is our beginning. I would venture to suggest to you that there is a very real sense in which the second coming of Christ is a continuous event, a narrative woven throughout history in the presence of Christ in the church and in the lives of so many Christian men and women. And so the second coming is present in a sense in the here and now. Yes, there must almost certainly be an end time, a parousia or eschaton, when creation will be consummated into Christ when he hands over the kingdom to God the Father. But how and when that will happen remains a mystery. Whether this will be a sudden cataclysmic event or the progressive decline of civilization into entropy, we can only guess. Neither can we know whether the end time will be focused solely on this earth or upon the entire universe. Scripture, as a product of its time, can give us no clues. Graphically, I like to conceive of the end time as a time when all creation is finally focused on a single point, described by Tara de Chantin as the Omega point, a time when everything is subsumed through Christ into God. Beyond this end point lies the beginning of eternity. Think of that marvellous architectural feature of the London skyline, the Shard. It is a broad base and everything soars up into a pinnacle at the top. So, to return to T.S. Eliot, our beginning is our end, but our end is our beginning. Our beginning, that is, of eternal life in the presence of God. We came from God, we are made in his likeness, and to him we shall return. That is our end and our beginning. But let us turn from this contemplation of the parousia to our own lives. At Christmas, the Christ child comes to us in abject poverty. He departs this world naked and bleeding on the cross. In the words of a medieval poet, the dream of the rood, enduring the most dreadful of all deaths. 
as we prepare for the festivities of Christmas, we prepare also for the end of our lives and so for the beginning of our eternity. What we call the end is often the beginning. And to make an end is to make a beginning. The end is where we start from. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Let us declare our faith in Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, on the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Our prayers of intercession this morning are led for us by Helen. Let us pray. Loving Heavenly Father, we pray for your world and all its people. In these difficult times, we ask that honour and kindness may be at the forefront of all our minds. We pray for the leaders of the world, that they may lead with a view to the bigger picture and not just their own domain. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all those in our churches, for the bishops, the archbishops, and particularly we pray for those who lead their own churches. We give thanks for the extra effort that to provide digital services of all kinds that makes such a difference to those who cannot attend service. And we give special thanks to Barnaby. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our villages of East and West Clandon. We pray for Ashley Park, for our village school, for cherry trees. And we ask for wisdom in the looking at the situation between West Clandon School and Shear School. And we give thanks, Lord, that cherry trees events have raised 38,000 pounds in the big give last week. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the many folk known to us, and also though not known to us, who are struggling in body, mind and spirit. In particular, we remember Sandy Tyrrell, who is unwell. And in a moment to reflect, we bring before you those that we do know. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Remember those who have died recently, or whose year's mind is in the coming days. And we remember Dee Vores and Derek Broomfield. And in a moment of quiet, you can add anybody else. 
Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And finally, Lord, we pray for ourselves that we may follow Mary in honour and obedience and courage and hope and love. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of our Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give to you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom, who live and reign for ever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread which we offer you. Fruit of the earth and the work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed, Blessed be God forever. mystery of this water and wine as we come to share in the divinity of Christ who humbled himself to share in our humanity blessed are you Lord God of all creation for through your goodness we have received the wine which we offer you fruit of the vine and the work of human hands it will become our spiritual drink blessed, blessed be God forever Lord, may the power of the Spirit, which sanctified the Blessed Virgin Mary, the mother of your Son, make holy the gifts we place upon this altar. Grant this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is indeed right and good to give you thanks and praise. Almighty God <coughs> and everlasting Father, through Jesus Christ your Son. He is the one foretold by all the prophets whom the Virgin Mother bore with love beyond all telling. John the Baptist was his, was his herald, and made him, made him known when at last he came. In his love Christ fills us with joy, as we pre pre prepare to celebrate his birth, so that when he comes again he may find us watching in prayer, our hearts filled with wonder, love, and praise. And so with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your glory, and join the, their unending hymn of praise. Holy, 
Holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. <clears throat> Lord, you are holy indeed, <clears throat> the source of all holiness. Grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit and according to your holy will, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us the body and blood <clears throat> of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, who in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. And so, Father, calling to mind his death upon the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world, rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming in glory, we celebrate this memorial of our redemption. As we offer you this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, we bring before you this bread and this cup, and we thank you for, for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send the Holy Spirit on your people, and gather into one in your kingdom all who share this one bread and one cup, so that we, in the company of the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, St. Peter, St. Paul, St. Thomas of Canterbury, the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages may praise and glorify you forever through Jesus Christ, our Lord. By whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory are yours, almighty Father, forever and ever. Amen. <clears throat> Formed by divine teaching and at our Saviour's command, with boldness we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Every time we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. I bring in the the body and blood of Christ, bring salvation to those who are sleeping. O Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. O Lamb of God, 
you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. O Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Grant us your peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be healed. The body of Christ, preserve my body and soul into everlasting life. Preserve my body and soul into everlasting life. Jesus Christ is present with us wherever we are, whether at home, um, whether in a church. He meets those who receive him with faith. He makes himself present in their hearts. As you look upon the gifts of God, the body and blood of Christ in this sacrament upon the altar. Perhaps take a moment of quiet to ask Jesus Christ to dwell in your heart, perhaps using the prayer of spiritual communion in your order of service. God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Leopold, may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Lord, in this sacrament we receive the promise of salvation. As Christmas draws near, make us grow in faith and love to celebrate the coming of Christ, our Saviour, who is Lord for ever and ever. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies, to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. Well, thank you so much for joining us for this Eucharist this morning. Sorry that it's not being broadcast from your church. Just to <coughs> reassure you, we are all okay. We have no symptoms ourselves. Um, and the COVID restrictions don't require me or Caroline or Leopold to remain in isolation, but Ludovic has to, poor lamb chop. Um, mind you, everyone else is in lockdown at the moment anyway, so it's not as though he's missing out on a great deal. 
Um, I've spoken to the Archdeacon um, who assures me that as long as Ludovic is showing no symptoms and I'm showing no symptoms or anyone else is the, in the house is showing no symptoms, our plans for in-person worship can carry on um, as planned because we have um, good COVID secure procedures in place in our churches. So our in-person Eucharists are very safe and hygienic, so they can carry on as planned. This evening, uh, there will be um, uh, our carol service premiered. It has finished uploading. Um, it's taken a long time to upload, but it is really, well, the music is really good. Can't say much for the video editing, but the, the music is really, really good. You're really gonna enjoy it. Please do log in, uh, go, sorry, go to YouTube at um, six o'clock um, tonight uh, to watch our YouTube recorded carol service with wonderful footage and readings from both of our beautiful churches. Should be a real treat. Sorry, I'm so sorry that we can't have a carol service in the normal way, but 2021, I'm sure it's going to be able to happen. So um, do enjoy the service on YouTube this evening and may God bless you all. A huge heartfelt thanks from me to all who've been involved in helping with recorded services, uh, particularly to Tessa and Sebastian, who have done so much to organise people and make sure people are in the right place. Thank you to all the singers who've contributed so amazingly. You know who you are and you're in the credits at the end of the video tonight. Thank you for those who've uh, contributed through doing readings and just generally thank you to all of you for your prayers and thoughtfulness to me at what has been um, a remarkably busy time of year doing things that I didn't go to theological college to train to do. So thank you for all of your support. Um, thank you to those who contributed to our Eucharist this morning, to Helen for her reading and prayers, to Douglas for your excellent sermon, Tessa and Sebastian for your wonderful music, and all those who've been involved today. We're now going to sing our final hymn, Thou who wast rich beyond all splendour, all for love's sake, Becamest poor. Thou who wast rich beyond all splendor, all for love's sake <coughs> becamest. Thanks for a manger did surrender, sapphire paved courts for stable floor. Thou who wast rich beyond all splendor, all for love's sake became asked All for love's sake became best man, stooping so low, but sinners raising heavenward by thine eternal plan. Thou who art God beyond all praising, all for love's sake. Worship thee, Emmanuel, within us dwelling, make us what thou wouldst have us be. Thou who art love beyond all telling, Saviour and King, we worship. Lord be with you. And also with you. Christ, the Son of Righteousness, shine upon you, scatter the darkness from before your path, and make you ready to meet him when he comes in glory. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, 
the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God.